luckily, uh, as the Australian team, we travelled quite a bit to Kingston and Jamaica to play over there. So I think most of the girls really knew what we were going to be coming up against and what the challenges were. Playing anything in the Caribbean is really difficult. You've got uh, the, t the, the difficulties of playing a World Cup really overlaid with uh, you know, food and trying to make sure that you cope with the humidity and the heat and all that sort of thing. We did a lot of what ifs um, and trying to prepare ourselves. One was what if the lights go out and that actually happened. So that, that's, that was sort of the challenges that we had along the way. But all the teams had that. All the teams, you know, had the saucepan lids and the banging and the incredibly loud noise that you don't get anywhere else than um, nothing like that anywhere else in the world that what you get in in the Caribbean. So there was those challenges, but everyone's playing in those those conditions. We had ice vests, which in the end we didn't need because it was so air conditioned in the stadium that we needed our track suits on. But, you know, they were all the things that we were kind of playing around with and, and trying to find the right balance with. Well, the issue, I guess, for New Zealanders back home watching this in the middle of winter is whether this silver fern side can bury the ghosts of the 1990s or will this uh, remarkable Australian dynasty stretch further? We had a group of girls who had come out of me, being with me in 95 and losing by one, being with Yvonne in 99 and losing by one. So there was that real pain, I guess, that drives someone. And then we had athletes like Anna um, Robery and Leslie Nicholl, core players who had felt that pain. And in some cases, Belinda Colling um, had felt it quite severely, so you, you just knew you had a group of players who had a passion. We'd worked really hard, we had the right mix of um, capability, of um, desire, and, and we had really great positional cover and really skillful and talented players. Irene Van Dyke, it was her first World Cup for New Zealand, so she um, was just in the absolute prime of her playing career. So they'd assembled this team that really had started to develop that real sense of belief. Um, they had some really great defensive players, they had a really speedy midcourt, and they had Irene Van Dyke at the end. The big ball to Van Dyke, and Ellis just watches it airmailed over the top. Well, it was just a real dogged fight. There was one point when Tempara George, who was quite new into the Silverfern side, was, was stood off the court for a period of time by the umpire because of the aggressiveness that she was playing with, which I've got to say I loved, even although she was my opposition. I always loved the way she, she took the game on. You watch that game back and she's so determined. It's almost like she's going to win the World Cup by herself and she drags her team over the line. Oh, look, there she is again. <laughs> The crowd are on their feet, they just love her. She's a little dynamo. Oh, She's there. off. She is off. That's her tenth contact. Tenth contact. Yeah, it's quite heavy in the mid. Well, this is a tragedy for New Zealand. This will test their metal, it'll test their character now. You don't get a sense at the time of, oh wow, this is historic. She's the first player ever to be sent off in a World Cup. Final, but you get the sense of, it showed me just how desperate she was. She was will, willing to really test that line and be sent from the court. And the thing in netball, you only get sent off for a couple of goals. So in the greater scheme of things, it didn't make much difference other than to fire her up. The way that Ruth and I worked together too meant we, we kind of were seeing ourselves as giving the team over to the players in a really positive and constructive way. And that transpired to be the best way because when Timmy Pada got sent off the court. Ruth and I, we had discussed it with the group. In fact, we basically became passengers in the whole scenario because they took control, the players took control and, and dealt with it beautifully. They had a real fight about them, the Silver Ferns, and we obviously tried to do as, as much as we could to get back in there. We were shuffling the team around in different ways and there was a moment where we were just a few goals down in that final quarter and. Liz Ellis was trying to take intercepts, trying to do something special, which she has done so many times in those big moments. One thing New Zealand don't want here is a turnover, and oh, Ellis, how close was that? There was only millimetres in that one. That was there for the taking. I think four years ago she would have got that. I think so too. 
We did get a few turnovers and we kept clawing our whole the whole way through, but just wasn't meant to be. It's desperation time for Australia. They need a turnover. Oh, that's her fifth in the match. Fantastic work, Cheryl Clark. Although Australia have got it back again, back they come again. 25 seconds left. They can still win it, Australia. 49 to 47, one more turnover. New Zealand again, it's the same equation. Hang on to the ball. Oh, no. And it's been given away. Here comes the Australians. What's the call? Play on, says the umpire. Cox calling for the contact. There it is. That's it. They have done it. 16 years and the drought is over. I wouldn't want to take away anything from their win by saying, you know, the Diamonds didn't prepare or whatever. It was simply that they were just a great team and they'd assembled the right players and they developed this sense of belief and it paid dividends for them. Yeah, this is definitely the best moment of my netball career. It's just overwhelming. Oh, we share this gold medal with so many people back home, so many players that have been so close in Manchester and Birmingham and Kuala Lumpur and all our families and friends and support from back home have been amazing, so we share this victory with all of them. When you lose a match like that, it's the World Cup in netball. It only comes around once every four years. There's, there's an incredible amount of disappointment, and, you know, we knew that... Um, that was Kath Harvey's eventually, that Kath, Kath Harvey's last match and a few of the other girls didn't play again after that. So, you know, it is, it's a special time and, you know, you lose after each of the World Cups, you lose someone special out of that group that's been a huge part of the team for a long time. And I think that for me is the th sort of things that make it harder because that was kind of their last chance for something special in, in that moment. So, um, it was, yeah, bigger than just the disappointment that I had, which was huge. Um, it's kind of everything that goes along with that too.